I'm creating a miniature solar system exploration game inspired by Outer Wilds in the Godot game engine. In order to test my planet creation skills, I'm recreating our solar system in my game. But there were a few things I wanted to get out of the way before that. Mega structures are cool. I already have a ring world in the game, so let's make a Dyson Sphere. I made one previously for an Outer Wilds mod that I accidentally deleted, so it wasn't too hard for me to recreate it. Dyson Spheres are these, well, spheres that could theoretically be built around a star to harvest all of its energy. Next up, the lack of ambient light makes the game look a bit weird here, so I want to add some in. For some reason, the ambient light from the world environment node doesn't really do anything when I'm using it with a sky shader. I have to make the stars super bright for me to get any light out of the world environment, but when I do that, the surface of planets gets colored by the stars. This isn't ideal for me, so what I've done instead is a bit weird. I put six directional lights, one facing in each direction, x, y, z, back and forth, and this more or less lights everything a bit equally. To make the player not flop around when walking, I don't use the built-in physics engine to rotate the player and instead do it manually. Because of this, when the planet rotates underneath me, I don't rotate with it, so relative to the surface I appear to be spinning. To fix this, I tried using the physics engine for rotation, but that causes the player to wobble too much, and if I apply enough damping to stop the wobbling, it also stops me rotating with the planet, which defeats the entire purpose. In the end, I had the thought to take the angular velocity of the planet I'm standing on, and then project that vector onto the upwards direction of the player, and then give the player that angular velocity. Why? I don't, I, I don't really know, it just seemed right, and uh, well, it just kind of worked, so I'll take that. Now on to recreating our solar system. Here's the Earth. I was trying to texture the planet with a shader so that I can dynamically create the planet meshes based off of a height map. A height map has white for the highest points and black for the lowest points. When I dynamically create this mesh, I don't want to have to worry about the texture UVs, so that's why I'm using a shader. But then the shader looked like this. So for now I'm going to keep them as simple textured spheres and worry about this later. When implementing the solar system, I wanted to kind of streamline my planet making process by moving a bunch of different variables onto the planet class, making them all editable in the editor, and making a base planet scene. I also wanted to give myself some visual feedback about the orbital parameters of the planets, so I implemented orbit lines. These draw out a circle indicating the orbit of a planet or moon around whatever it's orbiting. Here I'm creating a mesh made up of individual line segments that form a circle. Although I tried giving them an unlit material, they were still being affected by lighting. So in the end, I fixed this by giving them an emission color so that they are glowing white. Continuing on with the theme of making it easier for myself to make planets, I created an object to wrap the appearance of stars. Here I can set the colors and sizes of the stars and see them update directly in the editor. I forgot to change the surface size of the star though, so now I'm walking around inside of it. I used a fog volume node to make it so that in the event that you are inside a star, you can't see anything. In the future, I of course plan to have stars kill you when you go inside them, uh, because that's how stars work. So you would briefly see this before dying instead of being able to sort of see outside of the star when you go in it, which looks really weird. Next up, I also wrapped up planet atmospheres, including the atmospheric shader, the shader used for their clouds, and an area 3D, which is used to play wind sounds depending on your speed through the atmosphere. In the future, this area 3D will also be responsible for atmospheric drag and determining if the atmosphere is breathable. I was able to wrap all of these different objects under a single scene that I can place on different planets and adjust its exported variables to customize their atmospheres. I had some issues with all the planets sharing the same materials and meshes for their atmospheres, however. By default, when you make a copy of an existing scene, Godot has all the copies share their materials and meshes, because this uses less memory. It's not ideal for what I'm trying to do here, where each planet would have a different material and mesh. In this case, there are three planets that have atmospheres on them, and the big planet here is getting made last, so its atmosphere effects get applied to all the other planets. To get around this, you can check off the local to scene checkbox under the mesh or material resource, 
or in the code, you could have it recreate the mesh slash material for that specific planet when the game first loads. Anyway, with all that done, I can get to work on making all my planets. I've made a separate scene for this real solar system, which shares a base scene with the other solar system I've been using. I can now quickly throw together Mars and the Moon, and I made the Earth earlier. I made a change to how gravity works, where once you enter the surface of a planet, gravity will get progressively weaker. This will be useful for the gas giants, where you could fly inside of them because there's no real surface. If gravity kept getting stronger the deeper you got into the planet, when you got to the exact center the gravitational force would become infinitely large. That would be bad. However, you can see here that I actually messed up the math, and instead I'm getting repelled by gravity inside of a certain radius instead of it getting weaker inside of a certain radius. I'll fix that eventually. Next up is Venus. In real life, Venus has a very thick cloud cover, so I added a simple sphere mesh on top of it with a cloud texture. All the textures I'm using I got from NASA. Flying over to Venus, we can easily pass through the cloud cover and stand on its surface. Mercury was much simpler to make, as I don't remember if it has an atmosphere or not, but if it does, it's tenuous at best, so I just threw down a textured sphere for the surface. With all these planets, the scale of the solar system was really increasing. To help with navigation, I've made it so that there is now a raycast out from the player that collides with whatever planet you're facing. If you're facing a planet, it shows a marker listing its name and distance. The marker object that appears is the same as the ones I have telling you where your ship is, or labeling the planets in the map. Flying towards Jupiter now, you can see that gravity repelling bug I mentioned earlier. Back to finishing up the planets, next there's Saturn, which is of course famous for its rings. I made a shader that turns a flat quad mesh into a ring and takes a one-dimensional texture and sort of spins that flat line around to draw a nice textured ring. There's a bit of an annoying issue where the atmosphere is getting drawn on top of the rings despite the rings being in front. In the end, I changed the render priorities to have the rings always be on top. However, this means that behind the planet, the rings are still getting drawn over the atmosphere. I'll have to revisit this in the future to see if there's a better way of doing this. And here's the final product with Uranus and Neptune added in real quick. Originally, I was going to give the gas giants a bunch of their moons, but, but dear god, there, there's a lot of moons out there. One missing solar system feature that I'm really looking forward to implementing is going to be the asteroid belt so be sure to subscribe to see my future videos on this project if you're interested in that. If you want to access the development version of the game shown in this video, it's available for my Patreon backers. There's a link in the description. Thanks for watching.